Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to discuss to you statements or propositions and connectives. For the outline of our discussion, I'll discuss first statements or propositions. In here, I'll give you its definition, give you examples of statements or propositions, and give you examples of not statements nor propositions to understand the definition fully. Then we'll proceed with the discussion of the connectives. In here, for each connective, I'll identify it first and give you its definition, discuss to you its two table, and give you an English example to understand the definition of the connective fully. Now, let's start with our discussion. Let us define first what is a statement or a proposition. A statement or a proposition is a declarative sentence that is either true or false but not both. So, there are three important points in here. First, a statement must be a declarative sentence, then it must be either true or false, and then it can be both true and false. So, for a statement being a declarative sentence, let us elaborate it further. A declarative sentence is a sentence that declares or expresses an opinion. For example, I am your teacher. In here, the speaker is declaring that he is your teacher. And in here, the sun is round. It is an example of a declarative sentence. In here, the speaker is expressing his opinion that the sun is round. Now, what are those that are not declarative sentences? Command sentences like run, look at this, these are not declarative sentences. Interrogative sentences, those sentences that ask questions like can you help me or what time is it, these are not declarative sentences. Exclamatory sentences like oh and what a car. These are not declarative sentences, thus they are not statements nor propositions. Now for the last two points in our definition, it must be either true or false, that is, a statement must be capable of being true or false, and it can't be both true and false, that is, if a statement is true, then it can be false, and if a statement is false, then it can't be true, that is, a statement can be both true and false. Let us have examples to understand this definition fully. I live in Canada. This one is a declarative sentence. It is not a command, nor an interrogative, nor an exclamatory sentence. It is either true or false, that is, it is either you live in Canada or not. It can be both true and false, that is, you can be both living or not living in Canada. Then another example, my height is above 5 feet. This is a declarative sentence, that is, it is not a interrogative, nor an exclamatory, nor a command sentence. It is either true or false, that is, your height is either above 5 feet or not. Not both, meaning that your height can be both above 5 feet and not above 5 feet. So, satisfying all the requirements in the definition of the statement or a proposition, this one is a statement or a proposition. Now, what are those that are not statements nor propositions? Please be quiet. This is a command sentence, therefore, it is not a declarative sentence. Then, it is not a statement nor a proposition. The number of kids in the garden. This one cannot be either true or false. It doesn't make sense that it is true that number of kids in the garden. And also, it is not a declarative sentence because it is not a sentence after all. A sentence must have a complete thought, that is, at least it has a subject and a predicate, and in this case, it is a subject and it doesn't have a predicate. So, it is not a sentence, therefore, it is not a statement nor a proposition. Then, 2x plus 5 equals 15. If x equals 5, then 2 times 5 equals 10 plus 5 is 15. Then, this one will become true, but if x is not 5, let's say, x equals 3. So we have 2 times 3 equals 6 plus 5 equals 11, then this one will become false. Then the truth value of this one depends on the value of x, so it can be both true and false at the same time. Therefore, if we don't have yet the assignment of x, this 2x plus 5 equals 15 is not a statement nor a proposition. But if we assign x in here, this 2x plus 5 equals 15 will become a statement or a proposition. Now let us proceed with our discussions on connectives. Statements alone like those that I have provided 
cannot be very useful in mathematical logic unless you connect it with other sentences. So these connectives can be used to make simple sentences to a complex one. One of these connectives is the negation. It is defined as follows. Given a statement A, the negation of A denoted by not of A is true if A is false and false if A is true. So this one, not, this is the symbol for our negation connective. And what it does is inverse the truth value of A. That is, if A is true, then not A will become false. And if A is false, then not A will become true. So for an English example, let's say you have a statement, my cat's name is curiosity. Let us designate it as statement A. Then not of A, which is applying our negation connective on A, will be my cat's name is not curiosity. That is, it inverses the truth value of this statement A. So if this statement A is true, that is, my cat's name is indeed curiosity, then this one will become false. That is, it is false to say that my cat's name is not curiosity. Or if A is false, that is, my cat's name is not curiosity, then this one will become true. This not A will become true. That is, it is true that my cat's name is not curiosity. So that is, this not A will just inverse the truth value of this A. So for our truth table for our negation connective, in this truth table, the first column enumerates all the possible truth values of A. From a definition of a statement, A can have a truth value of true or false. So we have here true or false which are all possible truth values of A. Then not A, which is the application of the negative connective on A, will be inversion of these truth values in here. So if A is true, then not A is false. And if A is false, then not A is true. So this is the truth table for the negation connective. Now let us proceed with the next connective, which is the conjunction. It is defined as follows. Given statements A and B, the conjunction of A and B denoted by A and B, so we have the symbol for the conjunction connective. It is true if both A and B are true, that is, this A is true and B is true. Then it is false otherwise, so it is false if either A or B is false. So we have this truth table for the conjunction. In this truth table, the first two columns contains all possible combinations of truth values of A and B. So A can be true or false. But when A is true, B can be true or false. So we have here A is true and true and B is true and false. And also whenever A is false, B can also have values true or false. So we have here true or false when A is false and false. Now let us fill up this column which stands for the truth values of A and B. Now from the definition, A and B is true if both A and B are true. So in this first row, both A and B are true. That is A is true and B is true. Therefore, by definition, A and B is true. So we have here, A and B is true. Then false otherwise, that is if either A or B is false, then A and B is false. In the next three rows, either A is false or B is false. In the second row, B is false. In the third row, A is false. And in the last row, both A and B are false. So our A and B are all false in the next three rows. Then for an English example, let's say we have a statement, my father is a Chinese. Let us designate it as statement A. And my mother is an American, let us designate it as a statement B. Then A and B, which is applying our conjunction connective on A and B, is my father is a Chinese and my mother is an American. So we'll just connect these two sentences by a word and. Now let us proceed with the next connective, which is the disjunction. This is defined as follows. Given statements A and B, the disjunction of A and B denoted by A or B, so we have the symbol for the disjunction connective, it is true if either A or B is true or both. Otherwise, it is false. So if either A is true or B is true or both A and B are true, 
then this A or B is true. Otherwise, it is false. That is, if A is false and B is false. So we have here the two table for the disjunction connective. So if both A and B are true, then it is true by the definition above. We have here both. Then if A is true, that is either A or B is true, then A or B is true. Then for the third row, B is true, that is either A or B is true, then this A or B is true. So we have here true. And then for the last row, both A and B are false, that is not either A nor B is true. Therefore, the definition here is not satisfied to be true, then we have here false. So this is the truth table for the disjunction. Now for an English example, let's say A is my brother lied and B is my sister lied, then A or B, which is the disjunction of A and B, is my brother or my sister lied or both of them lied. So this is an English example for a disjunction. Now we have another connective which is exclusive or. So it is defined as below. Given statements A and B, the exclusive or of A and B, denoted by this one. So we have this symbol for the exclusive or. It is true if either A or B is true but not both. Otherwise it is false. So unlike the disjunction connective, when both A and B are true, this is true but in here in the exclusive or, when both A and B are true, this A or B is false. So for the two table, for the second and third row, this is same with the disjunction connective that is either A or B is true. So these are true, the second row and the third row. Then for the first row, both A and B are true. In a disjunction connective, it is true, but in here, in exclusive or, when both A and B are true, it is false. So we have here false. Then similar with the disjunction connective, when both A and B are false, this one is also false. So that is for the truth table for the exclusive or. Now for an English example, let's say A is my brother lied, B is my sister lied. Then for the exclusive or of A and B, is my brother or my sister lied but not both. Either my brother or my sister lied and they cannot be both be lying. Now let us proceed with the next connective which is the implication. It is defined as follows. Given statements A and B, the implication of A to B, denoted by A implies B, is false only if A is true and B is false, otherwise it is true. So let us have a truth table for the implication. So in here, A implies B is false only if A is true and B is false. So for the second row, A is true and B is false. Therefore, by definition, A implies B is false. So we have here false. Then we have here otherwise it is true. Then for other rows, it is true. So this is the truth table for the implication. Now let us have an English example for this implication. Let's say A is you got 100% in the exam and B is you got an A. Then A implies B is if you get 100% in the exam, then you will get an A. Let's say it is your professor's rule. That is, if you get 100% in the exam, he will give you an A. Let's say this A is true. That is, you got 100% in the exam and B is true, you got an A. Then your professor's rule is followed. But if this A is true, you got 100% in the exam, and B is false, you didn't get an A, then your professor's rule is violated. Now what if A is not true? That is, you didn't get 100% in the exam. Now from the two table from the previous slide, when A is false, A in plus B is true regardless of the truth value of B. So, in our English example, if you didn't get 100% in the exam, that is, this A is false, then your professor can give you an A or not without violating his rule. So this A implies B is true regardless of the truth value of B when this A is false. Now, A implies B can be read in many ways. It can be read as A implies B. If A, then B. If A, B. B if A, and so on. This is in here are almost all of the possible ways to read this A implies B.
Now let us proceed with the next connective which is the biconditional connective. It is defined as follows. Given statements A and B, the biconditional between A and B denoted by A if and only if B. So we have the symbol for the biconditional connective. It is an arrow to the right and to the left. It is true if A and B have the same truth values. That is, if both A and B are true or both A and B are false. Otherwise, it is false. So for its truth table, in the first row, both A and B are true. Therefore, A if and only if B is true. In the last row, both A and B are false. Therefore, A if and only if B is true. Then for the second and the third row, A and B have different truth values. Therefore, it is false. So we have here false and false. So this is the truth table for the biconditional connective. Now for an English example, let's say A is I stay at home and B is it rains. Then A if and only if B is I'll stay at home if and only if it rains. So if this A if and only if B is true, then if A is true, I stay at home, then it means that it rains. But if I didn't stay at home means that it didn't rain. So both A and B have the same truth values so to make this A if and only if B to be true. So that ends our video on statements or propositions and connectives. I hope you enjoyed this video and the next video as well. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.